first off, this is a follow-up from yesterday. Sokotoa is our main theme, which is going to be for any trig identity. Remember, Sokotoa tells you which sides are involved and which, based on that, which trig function to use. So this is 5.9.3. The next lesson, which I'll throw in on a separate video, is on special right triangles. But this is old. Remember, we just did some practice problems with homework. So Katoa tells us that if the opposite and hypotenuse of a right triangle are involved, we use sine. If adjacent and hypotenuse, we use cosine. If opposite and adjacent, we use tangent. It also gives you the order of what goes on top and bottom of the fractions. So the, th the sine of some theta, and that tells me, based on the theta, it tells me which is opposite and which is hypotenuse, which is adjacent hypotenuse. So based on the theta reference point, you're going to find the opposite side and the hypotenuse in this ratio, and that's going to equal the sine of that, of that uh, angle. We've already been doing some of this practice, identify hypotenuse opposite and adjacent. That's the first step always. We're going to draw a model for our two practice problems here. We're going to draw a model from the problem. And that's really, when you go into the problem, underline everything that you think should go in the model, in the drawing, in the picture you're going to create. Okay, so the new parts for today, we're going to draw a model, and we need to know these two different things here. So if I'm talking about an angle elevation, so elevation, if I was just gazing straight out to the side, I would have to look up this much to look at that bird. All right. So the elevation is just how much you have to look up to get to look at the object. For depression over here, depression is looking down. So if I'm standing up on a cliff, I could look straight out at the horizon. But then if I use the depression angle here, the angle of depression is how much I have to look down in order to look down at the boat. Okay. So looking straight out, depression is down. Elevation is up. All right. Straightforward, right? That's easy to remember. Okay. Elevation, how much you look up. Depression, how far you look down. Okay. So with those, with that in mind, now we're going to just take a look and see how are we going to approach the problems when they are given to us as a word problem. Okay. So let's see. Thank you, Seattle. Let's read through example one, and I want you to tell me to stop when I need to underline something. Okay, you didn't have to write these down unless you want to right now. You're going to be up for the class period. All right, at Niagara Falls, a tourist boat is 150 feet from the falls. Is there anything important there I should underline? The tourist boat is 150 feet from the falls. 150 is definitely important. Okay. Niagara Falls is 167 feet tall. That's a pretty important, right? They've got to know how tall this is. 167 is how high the uh, falls is. What is the angle of elevation from the boat to the top of the falls? Anything important there? It tells me what I'm looking for, anything like that. What are we looking for? Angle of elevation. From the boat, from the boat to the top of the falls. Okay. So we need to draw a picture. That's going to help us. Anyone? Uh, seen the boats, you've seen pictures of Niagara Falls, how the boats are down below and they kind of go up close to the falls like that. You ever seen that picture? Kind of like that. All it is is here's Niagara Falls, here's the water, here's the boat. So basically what we have is we know that the tourist boat is 150 feet from the falls. It's a right angle because the water going up is going to be it's going to be a right angle from the falls. The falls is 167 feet tall. We want to know the angle of elevation from the boat to the top of the falls. So I have Niagara Falls here. I have my boat 150 feet away. So I'm going to go ahead and make this last line is going to be our angle of elevation, how far up I need to look. Okay. So keeping that in mind here, let's go ahead and do our process that we're going to use every single time. Identify your hypotenuse, opposite, and adjacent. Which is the hypotenuse for this problem? Hypotenuse? Right, left, or bottom? Which is, and remember, here is my angle of elevation that I'm looking for. So everybody, if you're jotting this down, put your theta right there. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. It might be helpful to draw at least the diagram. The diagram is going to help you a little bit here. 
All right, so compared to this theta, which is the opposite side? I know I'm looking for theta, so I'm going to use two of the sides to help me find that angle. Now, which sides are in play? Uh, repeat that one more time. So, there's no information about that body. This one? So you're going to use, if you're looking for the angle, use these two sides that have information about them. Okay. You could do that if we knew the angle, then you could find that hypotenuse. So it's not, and actually you could find that hypotenuse using a squared, b squared, c squared. Okay. So uh, there's a bunch of routes to get to the same place, pretty much with everything. All right. So I know that the opposite and the adjacent are in play. Those are the two sides in place. So what does Sokotoa tell me about that? Opposite and adjacent? Which one? And, right? <laughs> so what? Tangent of theta? Because it's opposite and adjacent, I know that I'm going to use opposite and adjacent. I'm going to use that tangent. So watch. Tangent of theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. Remember that these trig functions, naturally, you could take the tangent, if you knew this angle, you could take the tangent of 40 degrees. We don't know theta. So instead of taking the tangent, how can I find theta? I'm going to take the inverse of this fraction over here. Okay. So again, we're going to use the second function. So go ahead and first just do 167 divided by 150. You get that answer, 1.113333. So we, we don't want to lose all those digits. So what we're going to do is now do the inverse tangent, second tangent, and then go second and find that answer button, 48.06. So that's the most accurate we can keep this. Theta is 48.07. So what's nice about this, and maybe part of the last night's homework being confusing, is you had to find everything. Last night's homework asked you to find every angle, every side, right? With the word problem, we know what we're looking for. What is the angle of elevation from the boat to the top of the falls? What is it? 48.07. I flip up, gaze up. So we're doing the angle of elevation. It's 48.07. Ten four, got that. All right, see the approach every single time. What are you looking for? Identify hypotenuse opposite adjacent. See what's in play. That helps you decide to use the tangent, and then we just work it out. Um, this part here. Anyone have a question on why I'm using this inverse tangent? Is that still not sure? Now it's making more sense. Okay. Get rid of the tangent, so then we get the inverse. There we go. You could think of it that way, like I'm doing, like, like I'm doing the inverse yeah. tangent of both sides. Yeah. You can think of it that way. Just like, if that's helpful, think of it this way. If I have x squared is equal to 25, how do I find what x is? I do the inverse operation, right? The inverse operation would be square rooting. That helps cancel it out. The exact same thing happens over here. If I take the inverse tangent of the tangent, those cancel out, and then I'm just left over here, the inverse tangent of that fraction, which is what I did here and found the angle. Okay, so that's one other way to think about it if you're confused. If that's more confusing, it's helpful for you just to know. If I know the angle, go ahead and take the tangent of it. If I'm finding the angle, I better take the inverse tangent to find that angle. Is there a way to remember that? A way to remember that, uh, Caitlin? You got like a trick to remember that? Just get in. Okay. I'll take any way that you can help but remember. All right, next one, we're going to draw a picture for this and then move on. All right, tell me if anything's important here. Tony is on a cliff 200 feet above the ocean. Anything I should underline? 200 feet. He's 200 feet above the ocean. So he's on a cliff. I'd start to draw this right now. Here's the water. 
He's on a cliff that's 200 feet above it. So he's standing right up there. Okay. He's looking at a well that is at an angle of depression of 50 degrees. That's important, right? Angle of depression at 50 degrees. This one is kind of tricky to write in here. I want you to think of what the angle of depression is. If he's looking straight out, it's how far you're looking down. How far is the well from where Tony is standing on the cliff? Let's say this is the well. It's a albino well. So we're trying to figure out that length. This is the right triangle because the ocean and the cliff are perpendicular. We need to find, though, what this angle of depression is. So first off, if I was standing up here, yeah. So you have to write the angle of depression as He's 200 feet above the ocean, or is that because I don't think the whale would be floating in the sky? So, like, do you have to write the depression part? Like, if we were told to write the depression? Well, because it's a reference point of him, we do have to. So he's looking at the whale. You're right. Deductively, you never look at a at a whale down yeah. or up. Right. Because the ocean is Absolutely, it is redundant in this because we know he's on a cliff looking down. Right. He's above the ocean, we know this, but it's actually, um, so it is redundant in this situation, but we want that in there because that helps us kind of visualize it here. Because here's the deal, if I'm looking straight out, right, I'm looking straight out, I'm looking here. So my angle of depression is from looking straight out to how far I move down to look, how far I tilt my head. So it's not this angle that's 50, it's this angle. Because it's how far you have to look down. So that's 90 degrees. So what is this angle right here? If that's 50, that is 40. Because it's a right, right, uh, right triangle. And we also know that these two lines, we could think of them as parallel. So really what we have here as well is this situation. We knew this was 50. So we know that's 50 as well, which means that's 40. So actually, I'll put that in there too. That one's 50. All of them add up to 180. All right, what am I looking for? How far is the well from where Tony is standing at the cliff? So this is my actual question. How far is the well from where he's standing, not from the cliff? So I want to find what do I want to find? Let's say this is going to be my theta. This is my theta. Am I looking for the hypotenuse, the opposite, or the adjacent? Hypotenuse. I want to find this. How far is it from where you're standing on the cliff? That's how high the cliff is. Almost. All right. Here's my theta, which is my opposite, excuse me, which is my hypotenuse. That's easiest. Hypotenuse? Hypotenuse. Which is my opposite? It's where it projects that that opposite side doesn't touch the angle at all. So here's my opposite. Here's my adjacent. So looking at that, I know I'm looking for the hypotenuse. That's got to be in play. I have information about the opposite. So based on the two sides that I'm dealing with, which function should I use? Opposite. And hypotenuse, the only one that works with O and H is so. The sign of that angle is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. So I'll go in here. I'm going to go ahead and do the sign of 50 degrees is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So here's the deal. Over here, we had to do the inverse tangent because we were looking for the angle. Over here, we just have sine of 50 degrees. So what's my course of action right here? What do you think? What should I do right here? Sine of 50 degrees. How about I take the sine of 50 degrees? Sine of 50 is 0.766. I'll put some more digits so we're accurate. 0, 4, 200 H. 
Thank you to all over one. All right, so then we end up with cross multiplying, we get 0.76604H is equal to 200 divided. H is that. We need to divide it by the answer. 26.1. That's, well, because I did 200. So I did 20, sorry. 200. Somehow we're magically 26. Let's move that over. That's better. 261.1 feet. So again, you don't have to find all sides. You don't have to find all angles. So these word problems are actually a little more straightforward to what we're looking what we're looking for. All right. Thumbs up sideways or down for this one? All right. Compared to yesterday, thumbs up compared to yesterday. All right. It's the second day with tricks, so that's pretty that's pretty good. It's pretty good. All right, we're going to pause, actually stop the video here. Um, goodbye.